Why she put these niggas in the hearse? Shoot a movie with the Dutchy killer verse. Killer verse. Killer verse. You at the crib right now on the spot. It's DJ Who. You know what I mean? DJ from the city, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Been DJing for about uh, 10, 13 years now. All through Cincinnati. I've also was DJing in Cali for a minute and in Dayton. Just out here trying to do me. Okay. What, uh, so you've been doing it for like 10, 13 years? Yeah. What, uh, what inspired you to, to, to start DJing? It was a guy, I'm gonna tell you, it was funny. It was a guy, he was, I was at a house party and he had some turntables, the old school turntables, the 1200s. And on his mat was a picture of uh, uh, this chick booty. Mm -hmm. And the booty was so fat on that damn thing. I was like, damn, this live right here. Like, what? Well, how do I get, how do I get to that? Like, how do I get this one right here? And then on top of that, uh, I was DJing already, just, I'm, I will not say DJing, I was playing music at this local skating rink downtown called The Hub for a minute, and everything just, you know, kind of blended together, and one thing went to another, I told my people I wanted to DJ, we figured out the way to get the turntables and get there, I still got the turntables to this day, but get the turntables, get all my speakers and stuff, and sh we just went on from there. And then once I got my equipment, you know, it, it, it went on from there. To, um, people just asked me to DJ, but my fir very first gig, like official gig was, um, was 2005, I DJ for uh, my high school, Hughes High School, Go Big Red, uh, our homecoming. And uh, I, Turned that shit up to the point where I, I went to school the next day. I, you know, the popularity was so crazy. I, I didn't want to stop after that. I got so much love from that. It was like that. That gave me the push I needed to do this forever. You know what I mean? Like so. That's what really uh, it's like my first gig and everything. But other than that, I was downstairs for at least a couple years, like down in my basement, just going, just learning my, you know, learning everything, learning technique, learning how to scratch, learning what music is what. And I did that for, uh, yeah, at least two years before I even went out and started doing actual gigs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and shout out to the parents for letting me do that because it was a lot of days of loud music, you know what I mean? But yeah, we got through that for a minute. Um, we had a nice uh, run. We had a nice couple of runs on a couple people, but it's just not impacting as much as it should be. We have a lot of talent out here, like people who you never heard of, but can blow, can sing their ass off, or can rap who has something really to say, and and they know how to deliver it. But you ain't heard of them because of the. Um, the opportunity out here mostly for real like you like you have to leave just to you know it's a lot of people who left just to get where they needed to get to because the outlet out here is is slow turtle so at the end of the day like the um our cincinnati scene the impact depending on who it is like when i'll give you a couple names like the main person who i seen who had the city behind him like that I thought that would really get the pushing would be Lantana. Like that was the guy who I seen who had the, the city, had the whole city. But then you have people like Cross, people like uh, my guy uh, Showtime. He, to this day, I feel like he, he he's still one of the lives out here. Like, so it, we have a lot of talent and the impact is just at a light weight right now because there's no opportunity out here to progress you know what i mean unless you have the money and then what comes after the money is you leaving you going somewhere else to get heard to get signed to get to get the attention that you need that you ain't getting here because half of the people here only want to hear atlanta south music anyway so it's like trying to embed something into somebody's head who doesn't want want to receive it and it's, it's kind of hard in a sense of the music scene out here but it's ways it's ways of getting there like i said it's been people who have put the had the city on lock they just didn't move progressively to the next and they might be I'm, I'm not even gonna say they did they still might be i don't show nobody down you could be 30 40 50 years old still rapping and still making
subdivision record labels it will give you the opportunity you need just as much as major record labels mm -hmm. so it, it's just opportunity do you think it's important for an artist to focus on getting a label or can an artist do it uh on an independent oh yeah people People have been doing it now. The, the way social media is now, you can get it, but it's still money. And it's still at the end of the day, you need something. Half of these independent artists got are signed in some type of way. Don't, don't get it twisted. They got digital distribution deals or distribution deals, period. So there's a there's somebody you signing something somewhere you just not actually on that label. Now if you was to get build yourself up and find a label that's ready to distribute your music to all mainstream stores that still sell CDs or vinyl and internet stuff, then sh that's that's kind of better than a uh, record deal because at the end of the day they ain't in your pockets. All they doing is distributing your uh, your product, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day. They're only taking the certain amount of money just for the distribution. Mm. You know what I mean? They taking their little couple coins off top, but everything else, your shows, mm. you feel me, your paid features, mm. all of that, that's your cheese. Yeah. So independent money is is where it's at, but it's just it's kind of more of a slower a slower process, mm. I would say. Cause major labels, they push that button on you. You on, man, you you doing features all over the place. You on commercials. You doing this. You doing that. Like they they got that button that they could push right on there and hit you right. But um, independent, is, there's no button for you unless you get that distribution deal, and it's still not the same because you're not getting no advertise. You got to pay for your adver at, own advertisement and all of that. So you still coming out of pocket, but you making more in the end because there's nobody holding nothing back from you you know you want to sell your mixtapes you want to sell your albums you want to sell your merch you want to charge to come and uh do an appearance or do a show that's all your money so i would say independent is the route is just a slower route but if you can find a major label that is want to spend that major coin on you and the contract is up to par mm -hmm. then that's when that's when you yeah i would i would sign but you know what i mean people signing these 360 deals and all of that that's when you get into they they basically got you got you by the strings you know so it, it just depends on the uh contract 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 because yeah, everything on that paper gonna come to real life when you get to work at oh the yeah time. yeah and then they gonna then they gonna say it there there is there it is by on this day forth so forth such in where you like what what is this what this ain't this is not english this is well, this is not but they got a lawyer over there who's speaking this shit that you need to have too don't never take nobody lawyer but your own if the label say we got a lawyer for you don't do it yeah. don't cut don't do it don't take their lawyers over because they going they looking out for the label they ain't looking out for you they looking out for themselves and the label yeah okay now you say you've been doing this for a while man you talk like you you really know you know what's going on or you got a, a decent perspective on it um tell me a little bit about like who you worked with um i haven't worked with anybody that you would be like i really haven't as far as it can be local artist wise and when i say local i just mean that because we from the same place as the artist i mean but i can say like i work with a lot of people because like open mic it just depends on what you mean by work with like hosting mixtapes wise i've i've hosted um Cali Cole, one of his mixtapes. Um, um, Tough Grind. Uh, my guy who be Wayne the Prodigy. Um, Stunt. Um, what's my name? Stunt. Um, Blackjack. Yeah, I did a, like two or three of his mixtapes. Um, just, just a lot of local working with them, but then working with artists as far as open mics. I work with probably almost every artist in the city is if you want to go with the open mics of just like, you know, giving them <clears throat> feedback and critiquing performance songs, blah, blah, blah. Like, so it, it, I am, I'm not, I'm not going to say I've been an influence, but we have spoke, I have spoken to a lot of artists and letting them know what they, what is good and what's not. So it just depends on what you mean by actually working. A lot of people have like, but it's not, it's in a sense of like, 
if I tell you this song is live, you need to push it. It's been a lot of people that took that, took that, and went and went on to push that song because. But they're like, now I got thousand other. I'm like, this is the track right here for you right now. Like, you, you, this is what you you can win this competition. You can do this. You can do that with this song. I can play this at the bar right now and be straight, and people gonna jug to it. So, it, with that being said, yeah, it's been a lot of people who, but. People are so much on trying to be like the Futures and all of them, the guys who put out four or five mixtapes in one year and stuff like that instead of really paying attention to that one song that everybody is getting a feeling for and, and just rolling with that. That's one thing that a lot of people don't understand. Like, I mean, you, you, all you need is one song. That's all you need is one song. That one song can get you everywhere you go. What? Uh, what the, what, uh, Soldier Boy. Yeah. Right when, before all this, all this Facebook, all this stuff gone, he had, what was the damn, you, watch me click that. This nigga had the most, um, ringtone, like millions of ringtones off of one song. Another person, Chameleon there. I know these are old people, but it's the same, it's the same sense. Like, it's, they had one song and had the most ringtone downloads, the most plays, and it's, you know what I mean? So, like, and then you could go with Cardi B, Blow That Yellow. It's about pushing that one song that you know is gonna work, that you see is affecting the most, uh, the, uh, the audience the most, and that's the song that you need to go with. Putting out a thousand mixtapes, you're gonna get oversaturated, you're gonna get songs overlooked that, that could have been your ticket out. Two, but you done made three other mixtapes with 10 songs on them too. Invest in yourself, and that's not just in studio time and beats. Invest in your promotion, in your advertisement. You need to be advertising at all times. T-shirts, hats, everything, bro. Like, you really need to be investing in yourself. That's how they gonna know about you. That's how they gonna see about you. My nigga Monk, he be, I see people with uh, I see people who have invested in themselves because they go to him and they put and he putting posters up all over the city, and that's another that's another person or another um, market or another place that you can be uh, setting your sights on, hitting up people like Monk the guy. He's the I don't know nobody else who puts uh who who put who promote like him, like he that that's the number one promoter in the city right now, and he ain't just on Facebook. Typing away, he in the streets. My nigga's in the streets all the time in the streets. I see him day and night, three o'clock in the morning doing his thing. And that's somebody you could call, bro. Look him up on Facebook, Monk the God. I hear you the one that that put these flyers out. I'm about to get five thousand flyers. How much you gonna charge me to throw them on every car at the end of the club every night? You know what I mean? He ain't about to go in your pockets. He a real guy just like everybody else. Everybody trying to eat, but it's money. You got to spend that cheese. You got to be able, you got to want to spend that And then advertisement is not posting your song on the DJ page all the damn time. We don't listen to that shit. We don't watch that shit. We don't do none of that shit, bro. If you don't personally contact me and say, bro, I'm an I'm a, I'm a artist out here, man, just trying to eat, bro. You a DJ? I just want you to hear my stuff. Well, how can I? How can we go about this? You feel me? I'm gonna send you the email. I'm gonna check you out, and I'm gonna give you critiques. All right, I, I didn't like it. All right, that shit was live. You need to go with that one, like you know what I mean. And, and at the end of the day, that's a better way of approaching the DJ. They gonna feel way more humble, just like in the club. We don't never walk up to no motherfucking DJ. Play my shit. Play my shit, bro. They ain't going dang on play it. They ain't gonna play it, cause one, you you approach them in the club. I ain't gonna say DJs have a set set, but they know what they gonna play. And if this something that they ain't heard, that the audience ain't never heard, or nothing like that, they gonna they not gonna play it because it, they don't know what's about to. They in the studio, they like shit. The producers on the same tracks with each other, the artists on the same tracks with each other, everybody building off each other. The, if the producer say, oh, this, uh, listen to my track, listen to this song, uh, this beat right here. Tell me what it need. 
they gonna be like, all right, it need this, need that. And when they get done with uh, saying they need this and that, they give them the credit as well that they helped out with that song too. And I just feel like there's not a lot of credit being given out here. Now, before it, it was real bad, but I, I've been seeing lately on a lot of artists in the city, they have been collabing and getting and putting in a work with each other, but everybody wants to be the head honcho, wants to be the livest nigga out here when it's so many live people out here. Like you ain't you don't you don't have to you don't have to have that persona about yourself because uh, because that's not we not in New York, my nigga. <laughs> like like there there's no egghead in this about this. This is it's all about pushing. So if you hear somebody who live. Give them that respect, like, yeah, that shit was live, but it's not like that, it's, man, he's shitty, or he stole my song, or he stole the name of my song, or he stole the concept of my song, but, like, artists do that shit all the time, it's major artists who stole uh, art songs from people, local artists here, like, and I ain't saying that it's, it's stealing or anything like that, but influence is influence. You know what I mean? It's gonna be people that you around that's gonna start sounding like you because they're around you all the time. So instead of dropping them like, or hating on them, like, man, you trying to be like me, you biting. That ain't biting, bruh. Future, Future, Rich Homie Quan, and um, it's another nigga who said, oh, designer. And they all sound alike. They all sound alike, but they doing a damn thing. It's gonna be people who sound alike. It's gonna you you gonna sound like somebody else. You gonna say the same shit that somebody say because there's only how many words in the freaking dictionary? Like there's only so many words you can say. You know what I mean? And it's gonna rhyme and it's gonna be onomatopoeias and all that. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, there's no reason to hate, but there is a lot of hate in this city. You know what I mean? And um, it got to the point real bad one time where the DJs in the city, <clears throat> we were so fed up with the um, just the bull that these artists were on that we kind of went on strike. It was it was funny because it was it was a whole situation where we actually went on strike and we weren't playing any local music in the city at all. And you'll be like, why would y'all do that? It was a couple DJs who were still doing it, but a lot of the DJs sat together. And it wasn't because and people felt offended by it because they were saying, y'all ain't playing no local music, like, like uh, we're going against them. And at the end of the day, it was a, it was, it was us trying to teach the artists that you need the DJs, one. And then two, that you need, that y'all need to elevate y'all to a better playing field at the end of the day. Like, we, we doing this because it, it, it's, it's tough love. Like, there's no more, when you grown, you an adult, there's no more uh, softness about none of that. There's, there's tough love. So at the end of the day, the hating made things worse to the point where we feel that we were fed up and we wanted people to learn that there, there's all love and two, that you can do anything, you can do better if you, as a team, as a group, if one person, if if a thousand, if a hundred people get behind one person, that one person will build up to be something because they got a thousand people behind him. Now they got a th he got a thousand promoters right there. So at the end of the day, it's about actually being uh, love all over because ain't no he shitty or my song liver or none of that. I know you can get you should be high that ego at the end of the day, but now nah, now nah, humble yourself when you not to that caliber. I will I play your track. I play tracks in, in people that I think is hot and in other music like I will play your music. So it, there's no hate as far as us, as far as DJs, because I know plenty of DJs who play local music every time, but it got to be local music that people want to hear, which comes back to advertisement. It's all gonna, it's all gonna flip around the promo. Promo is your number one. You should be doing 80% promo, 20% motherfucking rapping. Promo. That's gonna be, I, he, I'm gonna make him write promo at the bottom of the screen, right there, so that y'all know, like a ticker tape. Promo, 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 it's gonna go across. And if you ain't get nothing from me from this, I hope you got the promote. 
advertise. Look into advertise, man. You can put stuff on anything. You can print stuff on anything. Hats, shirts, shoes, cups, mugs, boot bags, uh, sunglasses, um, lighters, bones. You can print on anything. That's our promotion, man. You can go buy a pack of 50 lighters for $5. Get somebody to print your name on it and your number on it and just get the lighters out. Here, you're going to take a lighter. Here, you're going to light. You smoke? Here, here, lighter. They're going to look at it like, oh, this is a free lighter. And they got it. Let me see what this nigga doing. Like, they, they, like I mean, it, there's ways of promoting without social media, without the internet. 